President Kennedy's helicopter shuttles him to an airport near San Jose as he arrives for a little summit meeting with the heads of six Central American nations. Local officials turn the turnout for Mr. Kennedy, the greatest the Costa Rican capital has ever seen. The president pushes his way through the crowd to a greeting from President Francisco Orlick of Costa Rica. The flags of all seven republics float in the breeze as Mr. Kennedy delivers a brief message of thanks for his reception. And I want you to know, Mr. President, that I come here today not only with the members of the Congress and the Secretary of State and others, but I come here today with 180 million fellow Americans who want this hemisphere to be free and who want this hemisphere to be an example to a watching world in the crucial years of this century and this decade. And Mr. President, I want to express again our thanks to you. We could not feel more at home a thousand miles from the United States than here in Costa Rica. Nearly everybody in metropolitan San Jose, a quarter of a million people, turns out to cheer Mr. Kennedy on his way to the first session of the conference. The crowd yells itself hoarse for Amigo Presidente. The meetings are held in the 75-year-old National Theater, and taking part are the heads of Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Panama, and Costa Rica. Mr. Kennedy comes to the conference prepared to offer the Central American neighbors substantial economic aid under the Alliance for Progress to finance development projects. While no figure was given, it is estimated that the U.S. is ready to earmark $200 million to raise living standards in the six nations. The short but pointed Declaration of Central America calls for new measures to meet subversive aggression from Cuba. It says, a wall of freedom must be erected around communist influence in Cuba. Mr. Kennedy makes his farewell appearance at the University of Costa Rica, where he enlarged on his Cuban statement, saying, free Americans cannot accept Russian sovereignty over Cuba. That makes it a base to extend communism to the shores of our continent. He pledged the vast resources of the United States to help more than 12 million Central Americans help themselves into a better economic sphere. Mr. Kennedy went on to say that the United States contemplates $10 billion in aid to all of Latin America in this decade. He cited Cuba as an example of communistic economic failure. Agricultural production, he said, is 25% below last year. Mr. Kennedy is all but swallowed up in the admiring crowd as he leaves the university for the flight back to Washington. Political observers view the trip as more than a personal triumph. They see it as an unprecedented show of solidarity in the Western Hemisphere. It proved that national differences can be submerged for the good of the common cause, social freedom, and economic liberty. <laughs>